we are also going to have a look now at differentiating sine of kx and cos of kx a little bit more generally, OK? We have just examined so far that sine differentiates to cos and cos differentiates to minus sine. And I'm going to tell you for now, we're going to show why when we get to a few, a few exercises time, that when you have sine of kx, it differentiates from sine to cos of kx, but you also multiply by the coefficient of the x that you have. And when you have cos of kx, it will still go to minus sine of kx, but you also multiply it by k, which is the coefficient of x as well. And I've written here that this is not a rule in itself. This isn't like a specific rule that you're going to keep using in the future, but it's a specific case of one of the rules that we come across called the chain rule. And it just kind of makes sense to start thinking about some of these things that we have right here. So I've got six examples that we're going to have a look at together. Um, we're not going to do the exercise that goes with this. You might do some of it as practice for homework, because this is literally all the exercise is about, just differentiating using these simple rules that we've got here. So very quickly, we have sine of 3x. Well, I know that sine differentiates to cos, so it's definitely going to be a cos of 3x. And the rule also says that we multiply by the derivative of this. We multiply by 3. So it just differentiates to 3 cos 3x. The mistakes that I usually see people making here is they don't often put the 3 next to the x. They often just go, oh, sine x differentiates to cos x, and they just write cos x. But remember, you have to keep these arguments, the bits inside the trig, you need to keep them the same. So cos 5x is going to differentiate to minus 5, minus 5 sine 5x. And then 3 sine 5x. Well, the 3 is just hanging out at the front, so it's going to just get multiplied by anything else that comes along. So what do we think 3 sine 5x is going to differentiate to? 15 cos 5x. The 3 was multiplied by the 5 that came from the 5x that we've got here. So this one is definitely going to be a negative because it's cosine, and we know that that goes to a, um, a minus. So it's going to be minus, good, minus 12 sine 3x. That's what 4 cos 3x differentiates to. So it's kind of like you learn some rules and you just start like applying the rules. It's kind of a bit puzzly in that sort of way. And then a half sine x is going to differentiate to a half minus a half cos x. Nothing, nothing fancy next to the argument there, nothing fancy next to the x. So it just goes from minus a half sine x to minus a half cos x. What about this last one? Will it be positive or negative? It's going to be positive because we've already got a negative and we know that cos goes to a negative. So it's going to be a positive number and it will be 2 thirds times a half sine a half x. And 2 thirds times a half is just a third. So it's a third sine a half x. Now it's worth noting every time we do anything in differentiation, in chapter 12 I think is... Um, maybe it's chapter 11, is integration. Everything we're doing here in this direction, you're going to have to know how to go in reverse as well. And it's worth remembering that. Every time we see these things going from differentiation, you would have to think what the process would be like in the reverse direction. OK? So we can apply this to questions as well now. And it's exactly the same as the kinds of questions that you would have had in year one differentiation, where you're finding tangents to curves. So this one says that a curve has equation y equals a half x minus cos 2x. Find the stationary points on the curve in the interval between x, sorry, x is between 0 and pi. Now, before we actually do this question, you'll notice that the question is in radians. The question has to be in radians for us to be able to do differentiation. OK, you will not get questions that are in degrees if it's doing differentiation. It only works with radians. And the reason is because of the small angle approximations only work in radians. I'm saying that because it's the kind of thing they might throw in as a little one mark question. Like, what has this student done wrong? Well, they've been doing it in degrees and it should be in radians. OK, so if I want to find stationary points, what are stationary points? How, how do you find a stationary point? Dy by, dx is zero. dy by dx is zero. So I'm going to find out what dy by dx is. I'm just going to differentiate this. A half x differentiates to a half. And cos 2x dif minus cos 2x differentiates to plus 2 sine 2x. I've also put a picture of the graph there just as a, a bit of a 
visual representation of what's happening here. So I now have, this is the gradient function. I want a half plus 2 sine 2x two to be equal to 0 to find the stationary point. OK? So that means that 2 sine 2x two is minus a half. And so sine 2x is a, minus a half divided by 2 or minus a quarter. And we just want to finish solving that because it's asked for the range to be between 0 and pi. What do I need to do with trig equations? Put in? I need to multiply the range so that I have, instead of it with an x, I have it with 2x because my argument is 2x here. So instead, it's going to be between 0 and 2 pi, which is the standard kind of range that we usually have here. So solving this equation, 2x would be equal to the inverse sine of minus a quarter. Now I need to make sure I'm in radians mode. And I get minus 0 0.252 or 253 as one of my solutions. And the other one I do is pi minus. So I'm also going to do pi minus that one. And I get 3.394. So this one here was pi minus minus 0.253. Now, I write them like this because when I have the two that I've found, I just find the additional solutions that come along by adding on or subtracting 2 pi. Now, this one's not going to be valid because it's outside of the range. So I'm going to add on 2 pi to that one. And I get 6.031. That's me adding on 2 pi to this value here. That is plusing 2 pi. This one, is there much point in adding on 2 pi to it? No, because it's going to go outside the range. If I take 2 pi away from it, it's also going to go outside the range. So this one is not going to be a solution. So I'm just going to draw a line through it. So I now have that 2x is either 3.394 or 6.031. Final stage is actually just to find out what x is equal to. So x is equal to this one divided by 2, and then the other one divided by 2, which I've got in my calculator right now. So it's 3.02, and 3.394 divided by 2 is 1.70. And those are to two decimal places. Now, I don't know if that's quite enough of the question being finished there because it wants the stationary points of the curve, which to me implies they want the y-coordinate as well. So to find out what the y-coordinate is, if x is 1.70, y is a half times 1.70 minus the cos of 2 times 1.70. But you don't even have to write that down. You could just put that all in your calculator straight away. I'm going to use the slightly more detailed version I have on my calculator. So that's a half times the answer minus cos of 2 of the answer. And to two decimal places, I've got 1.82. And if x is equal to 3.02, I'm just going to substitute it straight in. So I'm going to do a half of the answer minus cos of 2 of the answer. And I get that y is 0 0.54. That doesn't seem right, actually. Oh, no, it does seem right. That's good. So I've got these two coordinates. My coordinates are 1.70 and 1.82, and 3.02 and 0 0.54. So let's just have a look and see if that makes sense in the context of the graph. 1.7 and 1.8. OK, well, that's 1. 1.7 and 1.8. Yeah, that seems like it's a sensible place for that to be a stationary point. And then the other one is 3 and a half, basically. So there's 3 here, and that must be a half because that's 1. So I have found that other stationary point on the graph as well. Now, if you only used your calculator and you just found out this first value, which was minus 0.253, who thinks you can tell me what stationary point that is referring to, the minus 0 0.253? It's the, one just it's the one just before it. This one here is the minus 0 
And if I wanted to find this next one up here, how do you think I would find this next one up here? Add 2 pi to? Good. I would add 2 pi to this one, and then I would divide it by 2 and all of that kind of stuff. Because trig graphs are going to keep doing the same pattern, lots and lots and lots. OK? So I want you to have a go at this question. We're not actually even going to do exercise 9a. I just want this to be our one way of practicing it, because I want us to learn as many of the skills as possible, because exercise 9a is basically what we're just doing right here. OK? And I've given you a little graph so you can try and interpret the values that go alongside this one as well. I'll give you a head start, and then I'll start doing some of it as well so you can see what I'm doing. So you might like to check that you've differentiated it correctly. You get 3 cos 3x three plus 2. And then the rest of the question is just trig. It's just solving stuff, OK? Yeah. I, it will usually say in the question, because my one hasn't, I'm just going with two decimal places.
So they do correspond to the right places on the graph as well.